Zion. I welcome you all to the TCS IOT webinar on teaching in the digital era. Today's topic is something very important and highly relevant for every one of us in the school education. School education and edtech are two pivotal points today. The world's biggest experiments in many ways is on now on how to reimagine teaching, how to reimagine learning, especially when we have been forced into a situation like this. Many of you are already doing your own little experiments in your schools. In this period, when the time is very critical, we bring to you a panel of experts who will share their experiences and insight, which we believe will help you to conduct your experiments more effectively. We have put up our panel together. I have the pleasure in introducing the first panel member to you, to Vengaswami Ramaswamy or Swami as we call him lovingly, the global head for TCS Ion. TCS Ion has been on the forefront of reimagining the education sector, always thinking of innovative ways to enable the principals, teachers, and students to focus on the effective teaching and learning methods. Mr. Swami with his technological insights will share his thoughts on how he thinks the technology will bring about a large change in the teaching methods and educations of tomorrow. Give the practitioner's view. We welcome Mrs. Vasanti, who is the principal of Padma Sheshadri Balabhavan, Chennai, PSBB, as it is more frequently referred to, is among the most well-known school groups in India. He's a gold medalist and a university ranker with multiple best teacher awards. He has also organized CBSE workshops on happy classrooms. Her school recently received the International School Award from the British Council. We welcome you, ma'am. The next on the panel we have is Mrs. Revati Srinivasan, who is a passionate educationist, heading one of the India's most premier educational institutions, Srimati Sulochana Devi Singhania School in Thane, Maharashtra. She began her career as a founder teacher of two schools in Thani and Bapi. Her school's innovative practices were quickly recognized by eminent institutions like the IIM Ahmedabad and the University of Alborg, Denmark. She has multiple degrees with specializations in management, education, and early child development. She's a voracious reader and she also writes regularly on education and parenting. We welcome you, Revati, ma'am. To complete the panel of experts, we have Dr. Snehal Pinto, who is the director of Ryan International Group of Institutions. He is a professional educationist specializing on teaching and learning processes. Dr. Snehal has a doctorate in education from the NOVA Southeastern University, USA. He is a very active member of the executive general body of the Council of the Indian School Certificate Examinations comes with over 15 years of experience across various state and international and national boards affiliated schools within the Ryan group and understand what works for one doesn't necessarily work for another. We welcome you, Dr. Snehal. Okay, now we'll invite Swami, Global Head Ion, to share his thoughts. Given the understanding of technology revolution across the industries, I mean, can you help the audience understand the impact of technology in this evolving world of education? Good afternoon. Thank you, Veena, to all the participants. Thanks to the panelists. It's a pleasure talking to all of you today. I would like to start wishing all the participants a very, very healthy life. I hope all are near and dear ones, including your children, as you fondly refer to as your students, are all doing well. Hope everything is all right. As we all know, these are very, very strange times. The world is in a tizzy. 
all the assumptions, planning, course planning, thinking that we all had before March third week, it's all gone out of the window. Things have completely changed. For the education sector, I believe it is too large a change and too sudden as well. We must take a moment today to salute all the educationists, teachers, and the educators. To me, they are no less than Corona warriors. Several have adjusted themselves to this new normal and pulled themselves to higher levels. I interacted with a number of teachers in the last 30 days. Sometimes they call and say, you know what, how do you join a, a, a video session? How do I upload my material? Things have changed very significantly for them. But we all know the human species has, can, has this uncanny ability to adapt and adopt to the changes that is thrown at them at a rapid speed. And this is no different for all of us. Almost every one of the industries has to accept a new normal and move forward to survive. There is no option available. The same thing can be said for the education industry as well. One of the key resources, or rather the reasons for us to think is we send the children to schools to ensure that they develop social skills by mingling with other children around them. Today, if you look at it, we are willing to send our children to school. Are we ready to make sure that they socialize with other children at this time? I'm not very sure about it today. So how children and teachers will adopt to a new normal all of a sudden, a classroom, a blackboard, a teacher, a midterm test are all accepted assumptions. What happens when these fundamental assumptions change itself? If I can say, in this COVIDian era, I want to share a few thoughts on how we have seen education changing dramatically and how technology can play a very pivotal role. Let me start with mentioning about three things that as educationists, as technologists in education should accept as a new normal. Clearly, we don't want to put education to become a video session by putting a professor or a teacher and a student behind a camera. Education is much, much beyond this. Simple video session really does not cut eyes. That's the first thing. Second, we all know classroom is not everything. Students need not be physically in a classroom all the time. A lot more learning happens beyond a classroom. Successful teachers integrate the classroom and the external world effectively in their pedagogy. Schools and teachers must invest in developing new pedagogies that will help them improve the quality of teaching in the current context. It need not be the classroom alone. But three, it is not essential to teach every topic in a subject, students have the ability to learn by themselves. However, it is important to have them engaged on meaningful discussions in every topic that we all teach. That's a new normal that we have to accept and look for various different tools that can be used in this new normal. Let me mention three important things in the world that we can leverage effectively in this new normal. Number one, 
all of us will have quick and real time access to real world resources it's no longer going to be difficult technology will enable teachers and students to get very easy access to a very large number of real world resources this will help students relate and get a contextual learning to what they learn now there are many examples it could be simulations it could be 3d visuals it could be videos it could be augmented and virtual reality and many more today they change the the students learn and the way teachers teach they are not necessarily sitting inside our own classrooms the world becomes a classroom there is significant amount of resources available in the world that both students and teachers need to learn how to leverage them effectively number 2 there will be deep engagement with wide learning resources it could be teacher technology in the digital world will enable interaction with the learning resources in a much more engaged and deeper fashion students can learn by doing they can learn by researching they can learn by interacting with their peers they can share and receive feed, feedback almost real time now new pedagogies will emerge as more and more teachers innovate in the last 30 days alone we have seen several examples of teacher innovation in identifying creating designing new pedagogies this will be the single largest change that we should accept and adopt it there are several examples a digital discussion room beyond the classroom for a given subject where the students and teachers together learn interact and from each other that could be a very simple example the third one assessments will transform itself in the future technology will support assessments in two new ways one is to ensure that we create lot more innovative type of questions in our question papers tomorrow's question papers will have a video question may have a audio response by the student may have hands on test and not necessarily a simple objective or a subjective kind of questions there will be lot more innovations in this space the second use of technology in the assessment space is to ensure that assessments happens remotely and not necessarily in front of a teacher how do you ensure it is fair and free how do you ensure it is ethical and is not necessarily proctored by teachers but with a man machine combinations and that's another big change we can expect in the technology domain but one thing for sure we don't think the classrooms are going to disappear but we believe the boundaries of the classroom will fade over a period of time and that is for sure we in tcs sincerely hope that learning and teaching in the post covid world in the covidian era will be the only silver line of the pain that the pandemic is posing on us and that will be the single most silver line that we can take from this I'd like to give our best wishes to all of you the participants and the panelists thank you very much over to vina again thank you swami i think your insights on augmented reality virtual reality type of questions will really benefit all the audience this is a new aspect of education that they will bring in into the future i now call upon mrs vasanti to share her views she will speak on how a school is looking at technology enablement and how online teaching pedagogies in the current scenario is complex and cannot be same across all learner groups over to you ma'am 
Thank you, Veena. Shri Guru Pyo Namaha and a very pleasant afternoon to everyone. A new challenge, it is said, keeps the brain kicking and the heart ticking. And I think for the first time, all of us are part of and experiencing what is going to go down in history as one of the greatest challenges the world has faced. Yet, I'm confident that with a positive outlook, we will emerge from this crisis stronger and wiser and be part of the movement in transforming school education. Over the past two months, we educationists have been resorting to various methods and techniques to face this challenge. And in the process, we have learned, unlearned, and discovered things about ourselves which we were not aware of. Online teaching through various platforms, remote teaching through audio, video modules, PPTs, assignments, worksheets through WhatsApp, etc., etc. In fact, I'm reminded of what I learned in school that was several years ago about education in Australia. The children in Australia used to receive their lessons through what were called the radio lessons. And at that age, I found that to be a fantastic idea. But now, I am part of this online and remote teaching in reality. So welcome to teaching in the digital era. So was this a daunting process? I posed this question to my teachers and the response was an overwhelming no. In fact, irrespective of their age and the number of years of experience in school, all the teachers rose to the occasion and they found this challenge quite enjoyable. And amidst this housework and meeting the demands of the family members, they have found this experience to be exciting and rather enriching also. So there are many positives which have emerged in this scenario, I would say. The accountability of the teacher is very high. In a normal classroom situation, a lapse or a slip while teaching could go unnoticed, but is not so in an audio or a video lesson. So the teachers have to be extra careful in preparing these lessons. And that involved a lot of research, which I think led to a lot of subject enrichment on the part of the teachers. Also, these modules are quite extensive and exhaustive and in-depth as there is no time constraint. And most importantly, the creativity of the teachers has been brought to the fore. And I should like to say over here that the lessons which our teachers have prepared would make a rich and valuable contribution in setting up a teacher's resource center in our school. And our dear founder, Dr. Mrs. YGP, who was an inspiration to all of us, would have definitely been proud of her teachers. But now moving to the other side of this digital platform, the students, they have been receiving their lessons in all forms, in forms which they never imagined, even in their wildest of dreams. So it has been a paradigm shift for the students also. But I would say that one main feature which has emerged in this scenario is the teaching learning has become self-paced learning. And this is particularly beneficial to the slow learners, if I may say so. And although not in the true sense of the word, the teaching learning has now become more of an individual type and it is more of a one-on-one -on -one basis. So it has been very helpful to almost all the learners. In fact, a parent of Standard 8 shared her words of appreciation in the way the modules were designed because she could see her son enjoying and learning that lesson on his own without the help or support of any adult. So that is something which is new, which has evolved in this process. And I think the students have also acquired or are learning to acquire new skills, life skills, which are very important, such as adaptability, organizational skills, crisis management, and trustworthiness. Yes, their responses to tests and assignments which they took in their houses have been by and large honest and sincere. Our approach to teaching in these methods through high school has been by and large examination oriented, but this cannot be the approach for all levels, particularly the younger children. They are more active and we cannot expect the younger kids to be sitting in one place and listening to all these audio video modules. In fact, for the younger children, learning in the true sense of the word should be the watchword. 
and not compliance in terms of completion and submission of worksheets and assignments. As Mr. Swami was rightly saying, there are many projects connecting to nature which can be done. In fact, this would be the right time to adopt and implement project-based learning. Simple projects which can be carried out at home and the children learning the concepts behind them would be a very enriching and enjoyable learning experience for the children. Of course, it has to be mapped to the curriculum and the learning objectives have to be clearly specified in the lesson plan. Just to give a few examples in science, the kids can be asked to study the different types of leaves or flowers in their garden. Or if they didn't have one, they can be asked to grow their own plants from easily available materials at home, like the mustard seeds or methi seeds, observe their growth, and learn to write down their observations. And I must say that in this digital era, there are plenty of apps which are available, which will make the investigation of such projects very simple and easy for a, even a primary kid to use. Another example would be, for example, observing the night sky and learning about the movement, about the stars and the planets. Again, plenty of apps are available. However, it's very important that the teachers give them a structured guidelines on how to conduct this project, how to observe, how to document and record these observations, and how to make the presentation too. In all this, I must say that there is a very important role to be played, and that is of the parents completing the golden triangle. Until two months ago, the parents were not quite aware of the teaching learning process, but now it has reached their homes. So their support and encouragement is a key factor in the success of this form of education. Now this online teaching and remote teaching, particularly during this lockdown period, has its challenges too. Connectivity, availability of resources, the laptops, et cetera, et cetera. These issues still remain unresolved. The personal touch is lacking. The teachers definitely miss the connect with the children and the children also miss connecting with, if not their teachers, definitely with their friends and their classmates. And also most of it is one way. So learning subjects like math is still a challenge. And so also is administering tests and exams. And most importantly, online teaching is a different ball game altogether. So the teacher's skilling is a very crucial factor we have to take into account. Teachers have to be given extensive training in conducting online sessions. And in my opinion, the emotional needs of the children are not fully addressed by this method. Yet, my message would be embrace the challenge and look for the way. And the way would be digital teaching during the lockdown period, and thereafter judiciously blending it with a regular classroom teaching, the traditional classroom method, giving a sort of a hybrid system. For our students now are those who belong to the Generation Z and the Gen Alpha. They were born with a gadget in their hands. So I think it's high time we change our approach to school education. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you all. Thank you, Matt. I think it was wonderful. We hear you talking about the golden triangle, the parents, the teachers, and the students completing the complete triad. And I think your explanation on the life skills of how very simple techniques to be used for engaging the children with practical experiences of growing their own plants that would be very useful for all of us to take back. It is very nice that you shared your personal experiences and uh, how you are explaining the creation of the learning resource center is a very good example that we should emulate for other schools. Thank you very much. I will now invite our next panelist. This is Revati Srinivasan. Our school has been in, I think, doing a lot of technologies. They have been using technologies to managing students and learning. We will share our experience and how her school is leading it in the current situation and how her teachers have adopted technology for the classroom use. Over to you, ma'am. Yes, a very good afternoon to all of you. And um, it's a wonderful Monday afternoon. And we are here discussing, rethinking, redesigning education as a whole. On the 15th of March, we were at a crossroad. It was a Sunday. 
And I remember sitting at home wondering, what is the way forward? You know, you have a challenge in front of you. You have units to be completed, the board exams to be completed. And at the same time, you are also thinking, uh, I have so many solutions because uh, normally with ideas at this point of time. The mind has a whole lot of ideas and tells you ways to go and the intellect tells you still other things to do and not to do. So finally, you choose on your wisdom, uh, especially because I have almost 500 plus teachers and 9,000 kids that I have to think about. So when the setup is very large, uh, making arrangements for a uh, technology-based solution for learning becomes, uh, though it, of course it was imperative, it also becomes a little difficult because I do have a school in rural parts of uh, Madhya Pradesh. So I started to wonder what next. And ultimately there was only one thing. I have to create magic technology for my children. Why do children come to school? They come to school to meet their friends and have fun. If you think they come to learn, you're highly mistaken. They don't. So if you have to think that your children have to enjoy being at home and listening to you, perhaps for a long time it is a monologue because they can't see uh, and uh, have mischief among themselves, you have to create that magic in and the class, which is really losing to me too. So when I went back on the 16th morning, the first thing I knew was we are using technology. Two, I had to think about where, how many students do not have access to technology because I have a very heterogeneous school. And then find solutions for that. Three, was people. People is very important. Teachers, staff members. So how do we and help them out. How do we train them? How do we uh, give, allow them to explore, be as creative as they were in the classrooms, yet uh, be very, very secure by the way of privacy settings? How do we create SOPs, SOPs for the children as well? The kind of behavior they must have, the kind they can't be sitting on a bed with clothes around them. Uh, sluggishly getting up from their bed while the teacher is very enthusiastically teaching. So we laid down a whole lot of instructions. And you won't believe it. And uh, that in a matter of four hours, all of that was over, was done. It was done because the teachers owned it up. And that's what I would like to say. When teachers, and you can see that it doesn't matter, wasn't he rightly said, Age does not matter, experience does not matter. At that moment of time, we only thought of one thing, what can come best for our children? What will make our children happy? What will be easier for parents who are going to be managing work at home, work for home, and work for office, all possible. So we thought the blend of everything should be the best. So we started uh, the technology component, which I will and in first. We already have our own uh, app, which is a learning app. And uh, that has uh, all the video lessons of conceptual understanding done by the teachers of the school itself and taught by the teachers of the school. So that's a live app. And that was one solution that we already had on hand, which children could use. So they could use for all the lessons. The second that uh, we did have was uh, the fact that we could use the tools that are that were available in the market, from Zoom to Google Hangouts to Skype. I think we used to YouTube channels for PowerPoint presentations. We did a whole lot of things. And of course, our backbone, the TCS Ion came in handy, very, very handy because we use that to upload our worksheets, uh, upload quizzes, upload uh, notes, upload uh, questions worksheets, a whole lot of remote learning was in place. So we had to start thinking in terms of using web-based resources. So we started using that, giving children links. All of that, we did it through um, the TCSI. 
So as you see it, you are going to be using and we started to use a whole multiple uh, components, you know, in order to help uh, this teaching learning process to become uh, better and better. When it came to people, the thought came first was what about those teachers who were a little hesitant to go live on the screen. Some of them were conscious and the people who normally are bubbly, that was surprising, who are bubbly, who are loud, who can talk well, they were the ones who were hesitant about how am I looking, how am I talking, you know, the parents must be also sitting with the children, they would be assessing us also, all kinds of fears. And I thought the best thing that as a leader I can do is to strengthen the strengths of the organization. So what we did was all teachers who felt a little diffident, we thought we should give them time to learn. So they were the ones who worked back into making the PowerPoint presentations, making worksheets, making question papers, making whatever. So the back end work was all done by these teachers. And all the other teachers walked forward to take the lessons. So what really, and at times I did have an elderly teacher getting stuck somewhere with the noises of children coming and the children would tell her, ma'am, please mute it. You have, you can mute the participants, please mute the participants. This is what I think technology does. It helps teachers to learn from students, students to learn from teachers. And that is the beauty of learning. Unless we have people coming together, students, parents, and teachers coming together, we will not be able to come across to a good learning system. The next that we came across were parents who came and told us that we had difficulties with regards to assessment, uh, uh, bandwidth or network. Though, of course, most of them, all of them had uh, mobiles which they could use, but looking at it for a long time was difficult. So we started to upload all of our lessons on YouTube. This helped those children also to have an access to um, assessments was the next. So we always have been doing online assessments, so that wasn't much of a, more of them was MCQ. We, we tried out the subjective test for the first time. Teachers not just conducted it, but also corrected subjective exams. And that was a kind of uh, eureka moment for all of us when we screamed and in delight saying that. So little things that otherwise didn't give us pleasure suddenly gave teachers a lot of pleasure. There was a childlike excitement in each one of them, and that was so good. And uh, I also saw parental support coming in. Parents were volunteering to tell us that there is this particular tool that you can use, and this particular tool you can use. Parents and teachers and school, I would say, are always partners in education. And we have to see each other as a partner. Nobody sits on either sides of the table. We're sitting on across a round table and the child is in the center. Our interests are common. So let's bring out the best for the child. That's what we thought. When it came to content, initially they started to talk in terms of lessons that were being as lectures. Slowly we got them to believe that what you taught in class, the same methodology you cannot use with the learning model. You have to get more creative because you have to get interactive as well. And therefore, a lot of fun element was added a lot of acting was key, or acting talent came into display. Different styles of learners, different kinds of learners, or different styles of learning methodologies came in. Uh, there was a kind of consistency in the manner in which teachers tried out new things. And uh, each time there was a preparedness when it came to content or when it came to conceptual understanding. So this brought in a lot of, again, an excitement that I would say is very much needed, needed in the teaching field. So we keep talking, and I think for the past 10 years, I've been talking in terms of one disruption is going to happen. I never knew this it would be, but I kept telling there's going to be a disruption, and the day the disruption happens, the whole field of education is going to go topsy-turvy, and we're going to go beyond ourselves. Teachers will become invaluable. They are never going to be replaced. Their, their value is only going to increase, but the value will increase of those people who are going to reinvent themselves, redesign their thinking and redesign. 
but this is an opportunity for us to move on into a non-linear kind of education from a very linear pattern we are moving to a non-linear uh, education and it was time to challenge our own assumptions our assumption is that only classroom teaching where they especially for the younger children only when there is a touch and the feel and everything and is learning possible that we challenge so that's a basic assumption that we have so what did we do we tried to create ways by which children would also create videos where they had messages for the teachers teachers having messages for them they did uh, not just music dance drama they did everything online and they did it as a group activity as well so what we are talking in terms of collaboration collaboration does happen even online it's only that the teacher has to think differently and come out very different. It was time to believe that yes, you can bring about a change. And it was also time provided you have a feeling of inadequacy in yourself. Every teacher or every adult must have a feeling of inadequacy in order to bring out something supreme within themselves. If you have to challenge yourself, the only way you can challenge is to tell you tell myself that I don't know this, I need to. I must share with all of you honestly that on the 15th of March, the kind of researches I did for 18 hours at a stretch, so that on the 16th morning when I only have my teachers with me, what am I going to tell them? How am I going to give them all the windows that I can open? I had mentors appointed, I made mentors in groups on the Sunday itself, so that they, on the morning of 16th, would start training groups of teachers. So everything went just like that. And on the 16th evening, we did our first lesson. So on the very first day of the lockdown, our first Zoom lesson happened. That's when we knew. But all of that, we did it on 15th. So it only goes to show one thing, that you must feel there's so much more for me to learn. And if that happens, I think the world opens up for it. And uh, the other lesson that I think I carried home is that uh, you always have to have this feeling that I must do better and bigger things. It must have a greater impact on children. Children must love doing what it is. And all of us must remember, we're not doing it for the school. We're not doing it for anyone, but for the children's learning. So as much as possible, we had to make it more interactive. I still feel there is an inadequacy there. We have to make it more. We have to recreate magic online as much as we create magic online, offline. It's very important to teach values to children, how to feel grateful, how to feel cared for, and how to care also, because perhaps some of the best of the occupations that may come in the years to come would be in the service industry where it would be about reading a story for an old lady and she or maybe a remind for an old lady and she pays you for it so uh, you know that may be the kind of careers that we have there may be a career where i just need to spend an hour chatting with an elderly person or a very young child and i get paid much more than someone who is in a bank office so that's maybe the careers of the future so children must multitask must learn uh, how to be able to do a lot more than what they are doing they need to focus uh, on organizational strength, we need to focus on that, bring out the best. And uh, more than anything else, I think this is a time when there is going to be not just cross curricular exchanges, but there will be across companies and schools, there would be exchanges. Across schools, across people, there would be exchanges. So it's going to become just one to do. Forget about the physical barriers. There's nothing that's going to stop people from interacting. In fact, um, I remember at a time, if I can just take two minutes to say that, um, a time when we used to have this concept of double promotion. And no longer we have that. Double promotion was only to make a child feel good because he was terribly gifted, maybe for maths or something. Today, it's that time for differential instruction. I can be grade three, yet do a grade four math just because I'm upgraded to that level when it comes to mathematics. So that is what I would want tech companies, ed tech companies to start thinking about how do I go with differential instruction? How do I go with differential 
assessment that we do. Today, to a some extent, I would say Maslow's theory of self-actualization. Because you are trying to self-actualize a point where you feel that you've gone beyond one way of teaching. The world is open towards you, uh, towards uh, the world is open to, uh, to, for us, sorry, uh, for us, and a whole set of technology and all possible methods are available to you. All that you need is a mind to open up your direction. Thank you, ma'am. It was really wonderful, the points that you brought about on, I think the key message is coming is that the teachers are the backbone of this transition. They are the ones who are being accountable. They are thinking creativity, uh, thinking of new ways of reaching to students, keeping their engagements. And I think there's a concept which says good is the enemy of great, which you said very well that uh, you should never be satisfied. You have to keep on learning bring in, adapt yourself to the changes that you expect the students to do. Uh, the example of the students telling the ma'am to mute everybody was very good. <laughs> I think it is learning mutually, you know, from both, uh, both of the sides of the... Okay, so we will now move to the next speaker, uh, Dr. Snehal Pinto from the Ryan Group. Today, she will share her experience on enhancing the teaching learning processes to develop an effective student engagement online. Uh, given the current situation today, it is very important to reimagine the education sector completely. So over to you, Dr. Snehal. Thank you, Veena. Uh, and thank you, ma'am. Uh, both uh, Mrs. Vasanti and uh, Mrs. Uh, Revati, ma'am. Thank you so much, Mrs. Swami. Uh, it kind of resonates with uh, what's been happening on ground with uh, us at Ryan, and I would like to give a shout out to all our staff, um, our teachers, our heads, our zonal leaders, uh, the technical team, and all of them who really rose up to the occasion and um, not just measured up, but did more than just uh, pace up with what needed to be um, in terms of change. Um, change, uh, Toffler said, is not merely necess uh, necessity to life, it is life. And that's exactly what we discovered um, about uh, 40 odd year, uh, days ago. Um, based on, uh, well, at Ryan's, based on the curriculum requirements and uh, considering we were at different points of the academic calendar year, um, it, um, it ha so happened that uh, Teachers kind of were already um, demonstrating and exercising um, asynchronous learning. So our portals were already in use and um, our learning portals were already in use. Uh, Tata Class Edge did an excellent job of providing us with content as well. And so things were already happening. But what this scenario uh, uh, did was just cause us to make it more defined and, and, and bring it to the fore. Um, one of the things we realized was uh, the need for extensive training, and that's something uh, that happened on a war footing almost. Um, extensive training starting from uh, zone leaders and um, heads and you know staff eventually. And it was um, um, incredible to see different generational um, teachers, uh, teachers from different uh, generations. Millennials took to technology like fish to water. Uh, so millennial teachers almost became teacher leaders, if you, if I may say so, for uh, paving the way for the other teachers uh, who had issues with, uh, you know, um, um, adopting technology as a way, uh, as the way, if, uh, if need be at this point. And, um, Online teaching, live teaching, like uh, Revati Ma'am said, there was a lot of hesitation among the teachers. Uh, but I think once the the guards fell off in terms of uh, this is who we are, this is what it is. Um, for us as educators and together with the support of uh, parents and students, students who are our biggest ambassadors and supporters, for them to come alongside and, and together weave an ecosystem of possibilities where there's no judging, but there's learning together. I think that kind of changed the whole um, uh, perspective towards learning online. And so um, there were, like uh, Ma'am said, you know, there were suggestions from parents, there were suggestions from students, um, and even among the teachers, we identified other the otherwise, you know, uh, who would, 
tend to not come to the fore who are not charismatic on, on, on live teaching in the classroom suddenly were research leaders and technical specialists on, on this forum. And they became our, our go-to teachers. So in terms of team building, um, and it helped. Um, so uh, teachers of a certain section would get together collaboratively and, and all of the platforms uh, mentioned uh, before, um, as well as apps. And what we realized was extensions is more helpful than actually taking the apps themselves and, um, you know, um, just transacting the curriculum. Uh, one of the things that we had to get uh, um, warmed up to was parents as well having a routine with the children, because you have to understand a larger majority of uh, um, our parent, uh, parents are working parents. And as we serve different demographies across different uh, areas and states of India, we had to um, embrace the fact that they are going to be teething troubles. And uh, we are not in denial of that. Uh, but what was helpful was the persistence of the teachers didn't give up persistence of uh, the students, uh, parents coming back with feedback uh, for us. And it, what was helpful was we just kept pushing in. Um, lesson plans definitely um, underwent a major uh, designing change. Uh, we had to ensure that the screen time for the children also had to be kept in mind because initially the whole enthusiasm, you know, everyone wants to be online. Um, the, the capacity is overwhelmed and uh, suddenly after that you experience a certain kind of fatigue. Uh, we had to be mindful of that and, and as a result, flipped learning became like a given. Uh, however, we had to ensure that there was a good balance of the same. Uh, giving uh, online learn, uh, live learning became more a platform to discuss, to understand, and to uh, clarify, uh, whereas an, an offline learning, the asynchronous learning that took place uh, became more of a research oriented, became more of you know reading time, and um, children slowly warmed up to it. And uh, what we saw was you know the classroom dynamics that we would otherwise see in our in our classroom settings, where you have a little bit of uh, you know kids having fun there. Uh, <laughs> Just like there was a high accountability for the teacher, there was even higher accountability upon the students <laughs> because now they can't be what they are in our classrooms, right? Uh, but uh, they they rose up to that occasion, and suddenly you saw uh, while we while the teachers had a captive audience, children were more inclined to pay attention and also go back to reading and coming back with more questions so where we had chat rooms and we had, you know, uh, breakaway rooms uh, meant for the same. Um, one of the things that was a challenge was the setting up of routines because both for parents and children, because there's sometimes within the families, there are shared resources of the gadgets and you have to be, you know, uh, take that into consideration as well. But all in all, uh, we saw the use of uh, new apps, new technologies, new platforms, all of it. I think um, as we went along, besides the repository that we already had in the class edge in terms of the content, uh, teachers creating their own uh, lessons, um, keeping in mind that, well, all will not be able to access it, and therefore I will need to record it. And it, it, it came teacher owned. So one of the defining things that we saw through this endeavor was uh, ownership of learning by the stakeholders, both teacher, the leader, um, the student, more so by the student. And as a result, uh, like you have the monitor in the classroom, we had uh, student leaders rising to take that ownership, to build that accountability, um, and uh, to ensure that there was um, a turnaround time in terms of, you know, assignments. During the lesson, there was an etiquette that, you know, let the teacher finish a lesson, and at the end of it, we have uh, time for question and answer Q&A and chats and any kind of difficulties. But um, during the lesson, there was absolute attention, which is um, which is a little um, at at first it is uh, overwhelming for the teacher that I actually have all of them just looking at me. Uh, but it was interesting uh, when um, it was interesting because um, it kind of brought in that comfort. And I think this 40 days for us as a community has been helpful in just transitioning to that new norm. Um, it, it we have kind of warmed up to this idea. Uh, however, one of the one of our um, um, concerns would be if it is 
looked at in the future as a supplementary to the convention rather than as one of the formal um, uh, ways to do it now. Um, we would need this to be validated and and I think, uh, given the forthcoming guidelines by, uh, you know, the government and all of that, we are hoping that the education department would also consider this now as one of the ways uh, to do education formally, because more and more children um, are on their way to becoming independent learners. And I think for us um, at Rhines, we have already been into, you know, project based learnings and applied learning uh, opportunities. This only this only kind of made way for more creativity, both by the teachers and the students. Um, the screen classify one of the apps that kind of caused us um, like how uh, sir was saying about uh, well there will be audio assessments and yes there were like when you give a certain essay when you write up a thing you got to explain it and that you know one of that was helpful uh, so uh, it it helped it helped just to bring together all the resources not just to a common uh, repository but also well what what is helpful to different demographies across the region. And uh, at the at the helm, we have a technical team, a tech team that looks into it, that moderates what is uh, contextual uh, relevant, as well as uh, what is feasible, uh, given the bandwidth, uh, what are the requirements and, and, in, and a huge uh, concern of security. And that is something, you know, um, they look at and, and then it kind of gets on uh, to the rest of us. Um, in terms of, um, all of this uh, obviously wouldn't be possible without the immense support of the parents. And I think parents just writing in two lines of appreciation, parents just celebrating that, teachers celebrating the little things that, you know, cause them to be wide eyed. Uh, what a huge, uh, what a, was a huge thrill for us, as well as feedback session. And this is something that we realized was teacher feedback is most crucial at these times. It's not just in feedback, but feed forward in terms of goal setting with the kids. And I think that is going to, um, that is going to uh, completely redefine the role of the teacher in this time. Um, not only creatively designing the lesson for an outcome, but um, making sure assessment is for uh, as an off uh, learning. Um, our focus mainly towards the end of the year was uh, assessment, uh, you know, for off and as uh, for understanding of the concept, not so much as you know a topical uh, understanding. And I think we'll have to revise that as we go forward. Um, almost. Um, all the schools uh, would be gearing up for an opening, uh, not in the near future. I almost taken it for granted that the first semester is likely to be online. Um, and so this has been a good warm up exercise in that uh, in that um, um, uh, direction. Uh, given that um, two learnings out of this um, one that the understanding of what we learn on in our textbooks in our virtual classrooms has given them like created the space within their home fronts to translate into real life situations and example taking that learning and applying to your uh, to what is available as well as uh, taking ownership of learning i think these two things really stood out for us uh, where children were no longer just receivers they were active participate participants in the process as well uh, these two things as well as um, the kind of strategies that came out, uh, even for uh, ICSC and CBSC uh, boards and um, SSC, where the teachers are being trained currently now because it was their uh, end of the year and vacation time. So everyone's gearing up for the opening um, in a big way. And I think um, there are so many factors we realize we'll have to consider in um, taking on a software or taking on a platform, you know, to ensure that uh, it's not going to be one size fits all, obviously, uh, but to customize a learning experience to the developing need of the student, the learning needs of the students. And uh, given that um, we are catering to millennials, I think, like ma'am said, it's going to be a mutual learning. Uh, we are all in it together. And I think this uh, last 40 odd days has been um, interesting because uh, we wonder if we will be able to cope up well, 1 billion people staying indoors at uh, one, uh, at one, not a command, but, you know, one instruction and we rose up to it. Uh, we, we did it. 
we've come this far. I don't see why, uh, by God's grace, and and you know, given the casualties, we still God has been merciful in just keeping us safe. Um, and uh, we will rise up. We will move forward. We have to move forward. It is the only way. Uh, this is rock bottom. Now the only way up is uh, go up, climb up. Uh, yes, there are challenges, and yes, there will be upcoming challenges. There, nobody is in denial of it. However, what is essential and crucial at this time is uh, the support of the stakeholders. It is going to be critical as we um, not experiment as much as as we endeavor to take on new conventions. Um, oh, everybody's routine, everybody's structure. I mean, all the parents, the working parents had a had a structure, had a routine. Uh, kids had a routine. Now the routine is uh, flipped and it's reversed indoors. Uh, and now they're adjusting to within the home routines as well as taking in, in, ensuring that work does not stop. Uh, similarly, in days to come, I, I know that we have it in us as a nation to um, rise up to that occasion and not just move forward, but uh, really empower ourselves um, to be enablers of this change. So yeah, thank you for this time. Thank you so much, um, sir, and, and all of you all at TCS for giving us this opportunity. Uh, we are grateful that you're one of uh, the providers and we are looking forward to see what you have for, uh, for uh, many of us out there. Thank you, Dr. Snehal. That was wonderful. I think you brought out the aspects of all these stakeholders, uh, challenges and how uh, the planning needs to be done and how technology can be leveraged. Proactively working out stuff. It was amazing to hear you and share your experiences. So with that, I sign off. Stay safe. Happy teaching and learning. Happy experimenting. Thank Good you day. so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you TCS. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.